Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18 RC. iOS 18 RC is available to developers and public beta testers on all iOS 18 supported devices. Now, if you want to jump right to the features in this video, be sure to check out the chapters in the description or along the bottom bar of the video. So you can jump to whatever you'd like to see. Now, if you're on iOS 18.1 betas, you won't have the update to iOS 18 RC. That's because you're on a newer version iOS 18 RC or what Apple used to call GM or golden master should be the final version released to developers and public beta testers before it's released to the public. Apple has actually said that they're going to release it to the public on the 16th. If we go to their website, you'll see on the iOS 18 website, it's available on 916 or September 16th, 2024. So that's when it will be available to everyone. If there's no additional bugs or issues, the release candidate that we install today is actually the same version, but we could see an RC 2 a little bit later if there's additional bugs before the public release. Along with this, Apple also released many other updates with iPadOS 18 RC, watchOS 11 RC, as well as macOS 15 RC, tvOS and HomePod OS 18 RC, VisionOS 2 RC, iOS 17.7 RC, and some other updates as well. Now this particular beta came in at a very large 6.98 gigabytes. That's anytime you install from a regular developer version back to a public version or back to a developer beta. Again, you're going to have to reinstall the whole OS. It just overwrites the other data. So it's not taking up additional storage necessarily, but it is a large download. Now, as far as the overall build number, let's go ahead and take a look at that. And then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is two, two, a three, three, five, four. If there's no additional issues that have been found, this will be the final version that's released to the public, but usually they'll bump this up one. Maybe we'll have another download as well. As far as new features, while there is not a new modem update, if you're coming from beta eight to this version or public beta six to this version, so there won't be any changes there, but there are some new features to talk about. The first thing you may have already noticed with the iPad here is there's a new hello screen. This showed up on the iPhone as well. So the first time you reboot, you'll go into the hello screen, put in your passcode. Once you have your passcode in, go ahead and tap continue. It takes just a moment and then it asks a few questions. It will ask about iPad analytics or iPhone analytics, get started. And it did ask about Siri on the other device. So it's just a small change. We see that every once in a while. Now, once you're past that initial hello screen, we have a few features. If we go into the camera and then we go to video, if we're recording a video, we can finally pause that video. So we'll go ahead and hit record. You'll see we have a pause button here, pause, then we can continue. So if you want to maybe reframe something, change it up, you can do that. Apple announced the iPhone 16 and 16 pros today as well. And they include a lot of different photo and camera features along with video features. So we don't see a whole lot of changes on the iPhone here, but we will with the next generation iPhone 16 as well as 4k 120 on those devices. So some nice changes there, but at least we can pause our video now, as I know a lot of people wanted that feature. Another thing that's been updated is if you have an Apple watch and it's connected to your device, you'll actually have for watch OS 11, you'll have some updates with flux and reflections. So you've got some new watch faces here along with the new photos, watch face that uses sort of AI or intelligence with the neural network in the background to sort of do the overall photo where it overlays with the clock. So some changes there where you have a circle or rectangle, and we'll talk about that with a watch OS 11 video. Of course, when that's released, another thing they've updated has to do with the wallpaper. If we go and add a wallpaper and we scroll down to where we have collections, they've brought back the iPhone 15 pro wallpaper. So you can go ahead and swipe between the different colors that match your device. If you want to keep that, they have finally brought that back. They've also brought, of course, the iOS 18 wallpaper and with the iPhone 16, there's some new ones as well. I'll link some of them in the description within settings under display and brightness. They haven't updated the wallpaper here, so I would suspect they'll need another release candidate or a change with the final version to update that. So that's something they haven't changed here. One additional feature I wanted to mention has to do with wallpaper. Aaron P 613 found some random wallpaper within iOS 18 RC code. So those are a few things shown there. They sort of look like the home background backgrounds that you can pick from the home app, but they're not exactly the same. We also have a bunch of different splash screens this time around. And while this update does include all of the major changes with iOS 18 with customizing your different icons, 
You can customize them, tint them, whatever you'd like. It includes all of those updates, just sort of refined to the point where they feel it's ready for release. But additionally, when you go into different apps, it will pop up and sort of give you information about different apps. So if we go in here, I took screenshots of all of them. We have a new one for voice memos. We also have a new one for home talking about the latest updates with control center and more. We have a new one for translate where we have Hindi translation, transliteration, your favorites on all devices. We also have an update for journal where you can create a richer journal, enjoy past entries and some other things with some new settings, as well as I got one for the iTunes store, which I haven't opened in a while. So this may have been there and then also had a little pop up here with an information window saying, make a scene. This is in free form where it says add scenes to easily jump to regions of this board. And then another one for Apple news. Every time I go into that, I see one. So there's some small updates there, but most of this is all refinement. As I mentioned earlier in this video, Apple introduced the new iPhone 16, 16 plus 16 pro and 16 pro max. If we scroll down, you can see all about it where we have 4k 120 with Dolby vision. We have updated microphones and much more. If you want me to make a separate video about all the things to expect with this, let me know in the comments below, but we have watch series 10, watch ultra two in a new black color or a satin black color airpods four, two versions one that has noise cancellation and one that doesn't and some new features coming to airpods pro 2 with hearing aid and things like that so that's some great features that they've introduced and i can't wait to try those out and with the latest update to airpods pro 2 we're going to have hearing aid accommodations that apple's waiting for certification on as far as an over-the-counter hearing device so that's something that could be coming in a future update i don't see the options here just yet but hopefully they'll add them very very soon now, as far as the overall release notes, while we haven't gotten much from Apple, as far as this goes, if we go into our feedback app, go into recent activity, you'll see, we don't have anything new here, but if we go to the public facing release notes, swipe over here, you'll see, it says iOS and iPad OS 18 RC release notes. However, I've gone through this and it's the exact same release notes as beta seven and beta eight with 184 fixed issues and 16 categories of known issues. While that's great, it's not been updated unless they just genuinely haven't updated it since then. Hopefully they've fixed the additional known issues. Otherwise it seems to be running pretty smooth. As far as bugs go, let's take a look at standby mode. It was a little bit glitchy as far as sort of going into that mode and swiping around. So if we bring in a dock here, let's go ahead and place it on here. We'll lock the device or just turn it off. There we go. We're in standby. That was nice and quick. Let's try it again. We're in standby, press and hold. It unlocks with face ID. Then we can change between it. And it seems to be working just fine, much smoother than it was with the public version. And we can go in and edit more and more or over and over. So that's great to see. It looks like they've fixed that. But again, let me know if you're experiencing a problem with it still with iOS 18 RC. One additional bug I wanted to mention that I've mentioned for some time has to do with the wallpaper dimming bug swipe up from the lock screen or from notifications. And it desaturates the home background. This doesn't happen in every update, but it happens from time to time. And one viewer actually reported it in feedback back and said that Apple replied that it was an intended behavior. That seems a bit odd as it seems to be hit or miss and sort of random, but apparently it's an intended behavior and not necessarily a bug, but personally, I don't really like it. I want to see the wallpaper the way I actually said it. Now, as far as overall performance, well, I've heard from a few people and from using it myself that it's very smooth. So far things feel nice and fast. I've seen some people say that 120 Hertz feels like 120 Hertz. It's super smooth going into apps feels nice and fast and just using it in general seemed to be pretty good. So going into the camera, if you want to go into photos, take a photo quickly, things work very quickly without a problem. Now, of course, iPhone 16 will be a little bit faster, but this in general seems to be pretty good. As far as the overall heat of the device so far, it's actually staying surprisingly cool for installing a seven gigabyte update, no issues there whatsoever. And if we take a look at storage so far, some people have asked me to cover that as well. If we go into iPhone storage, give it just a moment to load, scroll to the bottom. You'll see iOS is only using one, 1.44 gigabytes or 11.44 gigabytes and system data is at 1.07 gigabytes. So definitely an improvement there. It overwrites the other things and doesn't use up a additional storage that it doesn't need when it comes to the battery life. Well, it will take a few days to measure that. And I've been using it on this device back and forth with beta eight. You'll see I'm at 100% capacity with 52 cycles on this device. And if we take a look at the last 10 days, well, when I was using this throughout 
throughout the day, I'd get about six hours of screen on time. Now, today, just running it with this beta, we have one hour and 43 minutes of screen active time, and I'm at 48%. I did charge it a little bit to 49%, so it's actually doing pretty well. So I unplugged it after installing the update, and I was good to go. So far, it's actually managing battery quite well. We'll have to see how it is in the next few days. As far as if you should install iOS 18 RC, well, if you're already on iOS 18 betas, absolutely. This should be the final version released to the public. iOS 18.1 beta 3 hopefully will be updated soon to beta 4, and then we'll have additional features there. Apple has actually talked about Apple Intelligence, where it's going to come out next month in beta. So if we go back to Apple's website, go to their iOS 18 update site, and on the Apple Intelligence site, it says coming in beta this fall. And we have a little asterisk there. So if we go down here, it says Apple Intelligence will be available in beta on all iPhone 16 models, iPhone 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, iPad and Mac with M1 and later. So that's something we'll see. Probably we won't see a public release of this, maybe until December, some people have said. As far as iOS 18, well, I already mentioned that we should get the update on the 16th unless there's some sort of issue. So I would expect it next Monday, along with iPadOS and all the other updates Apple released today. We should have those final versions. Additionally, iOS 18.1 beta 4 could be probably tomorrow at this point. We don't really know, but hopefully we'll see something like that. Maybe we'll get Genmoji for the first time in Image Playground. As far as the overall benchmarks, well, I did run the initial benchmarks and I have 2,823 for single core, 6,572 for multi-core. While that's not phenomenal, it is better than what we've been getting running it right away. This actually before here, the one on September 6th was just a few days ago and it had actually been in use for a few days. So it's better than that as far as single core multi-core score will probably improve over the next few days. So lots of things to look forward to next week. Let me know if you've installed this version. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.